So in the last stream chat, we set up a tree farm inside our 7x7 compact machine right here. And since the end of the last stream, it's been chugging along, chopping down trees to the point where we now have, if we get over here, approximately 533 oakwood in this back chest. We have got 94 apples, 90 sawdust, and then a nice backlog of 391 oak saplings. And uh, of course, all of the oak wood is currently being pushed through this redstone furnace and into our cook ovens. And uh, I think right now we are backed up on creosote. So we do have a little bit more uh, in the way of cold coke. We've got 42 uh, backed up in our cache here. But as you can see, uh, these are currently not working due to the fact that we have got uh, way too much creosote in here. Now, what we could do if we wanted to is we could upgrade the portable tank with a uh, hardened upgrade to uh, allow it to hold even more fluid, but I don't know if we really need that much creosote oil. I'm thinking it might also just not be a terrible idea uh, to go and make the nullifier, which allows us to just destroy things, removes things from existence. If we throw one of those down, we could kind of keep this tank, which has, um, I think, 80 buckets worth of, uh, of creosote in it. We could keep the 80 buckets and then kind of just start deleting the rest of it and then always you know if we need more in the future we can always come back and um, put another tank down i think that might not be a terrible idea um i don't necessarily know how much coal cook we're going to need or how many diamond nuggets we're going to need but um as i've showed before we do need um at least nine i think it is uh, diamond nuggets in order to make uh, one actual diamond yeah in the high impact compactor and so if we want to make you know multiple diamonds uh, going forward we are going to need quite a lot of those diamond nuggets and so i think it is probably a good idea uh, to kind of passively be generating um, a large amount of coal coke so that you know when the time comes that we actually need all those diamond nuggets we can hopefully make them fairly easily so uh, let's have a look what do we need for the nullifier here it's not too difficult of a recipe we need one bucket of lava uh, two bricks, one device frame, two iron gears, and then one redstone server, um, all of which seems fairly doable. And uh, while I make this, the uh, the main plan, of course, for today's stream chat is to uh, hopefully get, um, or at least the, the initial plan, I should say, because I don't think it's going to take us uh, all stream to do now that we have our diamond nugget. Um, our initial plan now is to uh, get a refined storage system up and running, because we have it. We have the uh, the diamond nugget. We can get rid of all of our strong boxes, and we can uh, we can finally proceed into uh, a new world of storage and i'm uh, very much looking forward to it not only is it hopefully going to uh, free up a good deal of space in terms of uh, you know just how much space these chests take up but on top of that it's also going to make it just significantly easier for uh, for me to find things in the future right if i need to find something opening up a, uh, a terminal and searching for it is significantly easier than uh, having to dig through all of these chests to try and find uh, the one item that we happen to be looking for and so uh, yeah hopefully it makes us uh, at the very least a little bit more uh, a little bit more efficient Boom, we have a nullifier. And so basically, chat, all I'm going to do is in here, I'm going to uh, temporarily remove this and throw down the nullifier like so. And that should start hopefully deleting all of the uh, the excess creosote that we have in these coke ovens and thus allowing these uh, coal coke ovens here to actually produce more coal coke, which we'll use in the future. So back over here, let's see if we can't complete some of the quests that lead us down uh, to the refined storage system. The first one on the list is the steel pickaxe. It hits harder than even iron. I do think that we have made a steel pickaxe before now, uh, but maybe we didn't have this quest unlocked or maybe the, the quest book just didn't register it. Um, either way, a steel pickaxe is uh, not too hard to make whatsoever. And that is that quest complete. Following on from that, we then have quartz. It says goes well in fours. So to make quartz, we can either sift soul sand but i don't think that's the uh, the idea there uh, we can use the steel pickaxe i'm assuming we already have nether quartz because we have already used our steel pick before we do indeed we got over a stack of nether quartz fantastic next up is rich iron very useful uh, this is made with three iron ingots and then one nether quartz i think we are going to need more than one set of this but for now just to complete the quest i'll go ahead and do something like that uh, we then also need one silicon it says uh, or is it silly cone sad face not quite sure what that means, but we can get this by smelting nether quartz. And so uh, in the interest of getting ahead of the game, we'll go ahead and uh, throw some nether quartz in there. Uh, we also have the block of the machine of goodness. The machine casing uh, requires eight of this quartz enriched iron and then one uh, stone. Thankfully, in the last stream, we did get a ton of stone. Uh, not really on purpose, but now that we have it, we might as well use it. And so uh, if we just go ahead and grab one more nether quartz, we should be able to do something like this. Like this. I like this. Nice. So the silicon should now be done. It is indeed. Good stuff. And then from there, the only quest left before we get to uh, infinite storage 
is part of the process, which wants us to make one advanced processor, which is made by smelting a raw advanced processor, which is made with that diamond nugget, a redstone, a silicon, and then a processor binding, which is porcelain clay and two string. Now, I think once again, we are probably out of, uh, of hemp, although maybe not. Maybe I did collect enough at the end of the last session because we did start growing a little bit more uh, previously. Let me quickly check here for the old hemp string. I know we have at least a little bit left in here. We do indeed, but that's only one piece of string, right? Yeah, it is. And so unfortunately, we are going to have to get a little bit more of that, but that's fine. It's not too bad. And then uh, we also need the porcelain clay, which is made with one bone meal and one clay. I think both of which we probably have. Uh, bone meal we get from sifting sand. And we did do quite a bit of, uh, of sand sifting uh, in the past in order to get ourselves the uh, the sulfur. And so while we don't have a ton of it, we definitely have enough uh, to make ourselves at least one of those uh, one of those bindings. So I'll take you and then I'll clear. We have an abundance. We'll take that as well. Craft those up like so. Uh, like so. <laughs> oh, we need two of these. Okay, I see. That is also not a problem. And then do those need smelting if we're going to make the uh, processor? They do not. No, we do the string. Okay, let's get some hemp seeds then. And uh, let's get our... Oh, we can't get our watering can because our watering can is uh, is in the other machine. I guess we can go grab it uh, temporarily to do some, uh, some farming with. Uh, now, mm, actually, now that I think about it, chat, if we're going to set up a, um, a refined storage system, we are going to need um, a couple of drives, which are actually called disks in refined storage. And uh, to make these, you do need components. However, it looks like maybe we don't need processors. I I'm almost certain, though, that we are going to need some of these basic processors for something. Uh, the storage monitor, for example, requires a processor, um, which also requires that, uh, that binder there. So we are going to need quite a bit of string and, uh, and a fair bit of bone meal. I think it's possible that the... Um, 11 or 12 bone meal we already have, or the 10 that we have here, is enough to get us through. Uh, but we are going to need quite a bit of string. And um, I think, given that, I think it might not be a terrible idea to put down another cloche for that hemp so we always have that string um, ready to go. So uh, let me really quick here take a look at uh, what we need for the garden cloche. I don't really think uh, that it is too expensive whatsoever. Um, the, the hardest part really is just finding the space for it because it is, it's a little tight. So we need another iron mechanical component, which we've made a ton of. And we also need one of these uh, vacuum tubes here, which are made with a nickel plate, a redstone, a copper wire, and a glass. All right, that sounds, I think, more difficult than it actually is. So nickel, I'm pretty sure, is this one, which I'll go ahead and uh, smelt up there. The, uh, the redstone we, of course, have. Uh, the copper wire, we might have a spare copper wire lying around. I'm actually not too sure. If we don't, again, that's not the end of the world. We can very easily um, just take a copper ingot, uh, craft it with the old hammer to make a plate, and then uh, use that uh, with the shears here to actually make a um, a wire. Something like that. And then, uh, yeah, from there, we just need the, uh, the one glass and the one nickel plate, and we're good to go. So the nickel plate is just you crafted like so and of course one redstone is just right there so then hopping over to our workbench we should be able uh, to throw this together we might have to switch out our blueprint here because i don't think we have uh, the correct one in currently uh, so i'm gonna have to pop back in just a second but before that nickel plate and i think it was glass right oh no we do have the right to uh, the right thing in nice all right in that case then uh, we should also get two iron plates and uh the copper ready to go thankfully we have everything it takes to craft that in our inventory so we'll go boom and boom good stuff and then that's it we have everything it takes nice so back over here boom and boom beautiful now we currently have our aqueous accumulator underneath our or behind our barrel here so i think what i am going to do hmm can i put this like if i change this to output on the right can i just put my uh, my garden cloche here no, it looks like the water actually does have to go into the bottom. Okay, that's fine. It does mean we have to move this, but that's okay. We can make that work. And instead, we'll just shimmy this up by one and have like a fluid conduit pump from there up into here. I don't think that's going to be too big of a deal. Have we made fluid conduits? We have. Beautiful. So something like this. And then uh, we can also use our crescent hammer here just to uh, disconnect it from there like that. 
And that's filling up with water, fantastic. At that point, we can then go and throw in some dirt, as well as, of course, the uh, the old hemp seeds, which I do think we have extras of somewhere. And they're in my inventory, Isaac, you fool. Like so. Nice. And much like everything else, we should probably go ahead and uh, put down another cache. All right. So we'll throw that down like so. And that's going to start filling up with, uh, with string. Nice. Now, we do need to put this back down somewhere. And I think for now, we can put it here. But that is going to mean that we have to uh, change our power input over here. Because right now, this is set to up. It needs to be set to west, like that. Beautiful. All right. So that's fine. Everything in here is still getting power all as it was before. And now we're actually getting uh, the industrial hemp pipe. But look at that. We've already got 16. It takes us so long. Actually, I should definitely... Ooh, there were two outputs from this. Okay. Can you chat? Oh, gosh. It's getting, <laughs> it's getting real cramped in here, guys. I'm going to remove some of these chests that are not chests. Some of these uh, furnaces. And uh, what I am going to do is, first of all, dump the awkward back in there because I think I'm going to put my other like we need two caches right I assume that we can take our item conduit and do something like this if we don't connect it on that side there also I can't open that anymore and I think my gosh dang it, I think my crescent hammer is in there it is indeed let me disconnect that I'm assuming that I can do something like this and have one of my caches here and then the other one just beneath that. I assume that's going to work in pretty much exactly the same way. Like that. And then we'll of course put that one, uh, put the, the hemp in there and then lock them both like that. And beautiful. Okay, so that's, again, hopefully, chat, fairly soon, we're going to increase the size of this room. Because right now, it's getting uh, real, real, real tight <laughs> in here. It's getting real compact. But we do now have um, all of the industrial hemp fiber uh, that we could want. And I, in fact, I think I put some more away in here. I did. So let's go ahead and uh, craft that up into string. And then uh, for now, we just need the one. So let's grab our porcelain clay, which I put away somewhere. There it is. Boom. And boom. Nice. All right. And then finally, chat, if we combine one binder with one diamond nugget, one redstone, and some silicon, we get the raw advanced processor, at which point I believe we then just smelt this up in any old furnace, like so. And at that point, we have completed the part of the process quest, and we finally unlock the infinite storage quest um, which, once completed, I believe gives us everything we need to set up a very basic, very rudimentary refined storage system, uh, which is not only good, of course, for, uh, you know, better, more compact, more efficient storage, but it also uh, opens up um, a wider world of auto-crafting and, uh, and hopefully, you know, more advanced processing methods to uh, automate more of the processes that we've been doing manually thus far. So, for infinite storage, uh, it says having a lot of storage and ability to automate crafting and various recipes is very helpful. Uh, we need to make one controller, one grid, and one disk drive. Let's go ahead and bookmark those. Controller. Disk drive. And what was that last one called? The grid. Now, we do have to make the standard grid for the recipe. However, I think we almost certainly want to make the crafting grid for, uh, for actual use. That means we don't have to have um, the, uh, the crafting station down as well. We can do all of our crafting uh, in the same place that we get all of our you know, storage needs taken care of. Uh, that does require one extra advanced processor, but uh, we have those extra diamonds, so that's probably uh, well worth the, uh, the upgrade there. Uh, oh, we also need a construction core. Oh, so we need... Oh, we do need more... Maybe we need more processors? What do we need for the controller? Yes, okay, so we do need... I think someone did tell me this. Oh, we actually need four. Oh, no, okay, so we need... <laughs> of course, chat. We need three diamond nuggets to complete the quest, but then if we want to upgrade to a crafting grid, we do need a fourth diamond nugget. So we are going to have to blow up some more hop graphite, but 
you know, thankfully we did set it up at the beginning of the episode to where we are getting more uh, cold cog now. And so hopefully uh, that won't be too much of an issue and it shouldn't take us too long to actually get uh, that final that final diamond nugget there. But that is a little uh, a little annoying. So each one of these does need a machine casing. So let's go ahead and make a few more of those, I guess. Um, we've got quite a bit of iron uh, and also quite a bit of, uh, of quartz. Uh, I will go and grab our iron, which is currently being stored in here. And then let's go ahead and do something like this. Uh, we need at least 24. Do you need one to upgrade to a, uh, a crafting grid? No, uh, so we actually didn't need 24. We only needed uh, two of these, right? Yeah, because we've, we've already got the one. So two more gets is what we're after. I'm only going to make two because I do need uh, the quartz iron for other, other crafts as well. Uh, so we've got all of the machine casing. Uh, that makes the controller nice and easy to make. Uh, the disk drive then just requires another one of those advanced processors. So again, I think we've got um, almost everything it takes here, which is missing the diamond nugget, which uh, is stored away in one of these chests that are getting more and more convoluted by the day. They used to be nice and organized, chat, once upon a time. Now, not so much. And then for the uh, the grid, we need two improved processors, which require which are the same but with gold, as well as uh, one construction core, which requires a basic processor and a diamond nugget, and then a destruction core, which is another basic processor and uh, another nugget. Okay, and the basic processor is uh, again similar. So we need at least four more of these bindings, which means at least at least four more uh, clay. Now, uh, again, I think we should be fine there. We do have the bone meal and we do have uh, the clay. So one, two, three, and four. Thankfully, some genius in the past set up automated uh, hemp so we can uh, go ahead and make all the string. Beautiful. And there we go. So hopefully that's all we need there. Uh, let's go ahead and make the, uh, the gold two. Check before I actually craft those. Yeah, we need two of those. And then we now need two of these basic ones, which are made with iron. Okay. That's very doable, chat. I know I just didn't put iron in there, because I'm a fool. Oh, it's a shapeless recipe as well. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. All right, and then it was something like this, but we have to smelt the, uh, the basic bit first. This is not too bad, chat. Not too bad. My inventory is getting completely rammed full, but it's not too bad. It's not too bad. Those now should be smelted. They are indeed. Basic processor with the diamond nugget gets us the construction core. And then the final piece here is with a little bit of nether quartz. That gets us the destruction core. And at that point, all we need are the uh, the two gold processors, which are smelted up in there. And at that point, chat, we have everything it takes to make. Apart from the, the one iron that I just threw on the floor, we have everything it takes to make the grit. Nice. Uh, so all we're missing here is a chest and uh, two more of these uh, quartz enriched iron. That's easy enough. I'll go ahead and craft all those up and then eight planks. Boom. And boom. Nice. So we now have almost everything it takes to, uh, to actually uh, get rid of our chests. However, we do need to make at the very least um, one drive for or one disc even uh, for our disc drive. Uh, we'll start with the 1k variants. Uh, thankfully, these don't look too bad. Uh, they require three redstone, three quartz enriched iron, two glass, and then one 1k storage component, which is made with yet more redstone, yet more glass, yet more quartz enriched iron, and some silicon. So let's see, how do I want to do this? We already have five quartz enriched iron. I don't think that's quite going to be enough. So let me grab a little bit more iron here and just craft up a few more of those. And then let's see if we don't have what it takes. Now, I'm not too familiar with refined storage and i'm so I've, i'm not too familiar with how much storage like a 1k disc can hold i've used a lot of applied energistics but not much in the way of refined storage so for now i'm going to remove this crafting station i'm going to put it down somewhere else and uh, what we'll do i'll stick it like here for now what we will do is we'll put down our now the controller doesn't need power right hmm yes it definitely does so I think what we will do is controller, disk drive, crafting grid. <laughs> I know that's janky and it's compact, 
but it has to be compact right now. So what we can do is we can put our 1K drive uh, into here. That gives us 1K worth of, of space. Uh, we can then start dumping things actually into uh, the system. So far, we have filled up uh, 222, so about a quarter of the drive, which means we are definitely going to need uh, multiple 1K drives. And I should probably not be putting trash in here. Uh, if we're going to make multiple drives, I should probably start by putting things like ingots in because those are most certainly the things we're going to use the most of. Um, of course, right now, a lot of our valuable resources, especially redstone, is, uh, is held in this cache. And eventually, we want to put storage buses on these caches to allow them to be accessible to the refined storage system. Um, but again, for that, we're going to need more space because right now we are we're so limited on space that that's, that's just not going to happen in the current room, right? Refined storage is simplified. Uh, stack size and type don't matter. It's one item per byte, so 1K is 1,000 items. Ah, okay. Yeah, I know that uh, Applied Energistics has types and bytes, so this is just 1,000 items. Right, so, oh, I see. That's pretty good. Because it means that we've, we've got a lot of, like, individual items, like a lot of our chests are filled up with, like, two pickaxes, um, and thankfully those don't take up too much space, right? They just take up two bytes. All right, uh, let's go ahead and make a few more of these uh, 1K drives. Oh, we actually do have to, of course. If we're going to be able to use this as a crafting grid, uh, we also have to upgrade it to a crafting grid. Uh, now, to make a crafting grid, we need the crafting table and we need the one more advanced processor, which currently we do not have. So, I think, chat, that it is once again time to grab our personal shrinking device, head on through and see how much uh, cold coke we have. We've got 76 cold coke, as well as potentially... A little bit more out here. I don't know if I bought some previously. There might be some hiding out in uh, in one of these chests. Wishful thinking. <laughs> Either way, we can head on through to our crusher, which is now all the way back there. I think I missed that entirely. I did. I definitely need to move that block chat. It's way too far away. I think you can make the 4K easily. Mm, I guess it makes... Okay, so I guess unlike in... Applied Energistics, is it worth making like the, the higher tier ones? Like normally when I make an, an Applied Energistics system, I start by making like a ton of 1K drives. I assume in this pack or in this, um, yeah, in this pack, I assume it's much more, it's maybe more valuable to just jump up and make the 4K one instead of making four 1K ones. Yes, yes. But uh, okay, I'll make a 4K in, uh, in just a second here. But look, first of all, let's go ahead and uh, first things first chat let me get some cobblestone i'm gonna move this machine i'm gonna put it here for now and i'm gonna run some more leadstone flux ducts over to it to give it power just so that we can actually you know access the machine and now I do need to also place, uh, get access to my crafting station. And we are desperately, like, quickly approaching at the point where we need a bigger room, right? But there we go. That should continue to power our crusher. And so now what we should be able to do, chat, is, uh, is head on through to here. Drop in our cock cock. Like that. And that should all get put into the chest here. At which point we can then, of course, squeeze it, smelt it, and uh, blow it up. And hopefully get... At least one more diamond nugget, and that will allow us to upgrade our uh, grid here to a crafting grid, at which point we basically have the uh, the setup taken care of. Now, while we wait for that to uh, to crush everything up, uh, people are recommending in the Twitch chat that I make a, a 4K drive here. So that does look very doable. Oh, it's so awkward that I've just dumped all my stuff in here because now I need to pull it all back out to actually craft with. So we need iron, we need redstone, we need glass, and we need silicon, right? Now, we don't have that much silicon, actually. However, we do have 52 quartz, so I will start smelting up yet more of this. Is there an easier way to get this than hitting the wall with a, a steel pick? I know we can sift for it. We don't have any uh, soul sand just yet. But we can use a... Oh, we can use a boron pick for a 100% return. I know we do have... but I think we get boron from the steel pick, though, right? Yeah, but you can also get it from a hard carbon pick. All right, that's interesting, though, because we do have boron. And so we can just do something like this. Get the boron pick and then just hit the wall. And that's, you know, free nether quartz. That's very nice. Uh, change the direction of the tunnel in the crusher. I don't think I have to, right? 
Do I have to? Yeah, I do, right? Yeah, I'm a fool. <laughs> okay, hold on. There we go. In my mind, I was <laughs> I was foolishly thinking that like, if you imagine a block in, in, in 3D space, you imagine the block there, I was thinking, yeah, you pick it up and then you just move it so that this side here, the one the Fluxux going into, I thought, yeah, that's still the same side, right? Like imagine just moving the block from there to here. It's still the left side of the block, right? But that's not how that works. It, uh, it bases it on like the static coordinates, right? Like up, down, northwest, uh, south, east. So it does have to be changed. So for the third time this playthrough, TNT, button, 10 hop graphite, please give me just the one. I'm gonna die. No, I'm not. I'm dead. <laughs> I, I, we got one. We got one. I should have eaten some apples beforehand. But we got one, chat. We got one. Let me uh, quickly grab another, like my fifth shrinking device. Quickly grab all that back as well. We got, we only got one, but thankfully one is all that we need. So uh, now what we should be able to do, if we want to make the uh, crafting grid here, is uh, pick this up with a crafting table, which of course is just one log, like so. Uh, we do need to make one more of the uh, like processes. So we do need more of that, uh, that binder there, which means we do need uh, some more porcelain clay, which thankfully we do have. So one of you, and then two string. That's going to get us the binder, of course, with uh, actual silicon and redstone. I think, Chad, that is pretty much everything. Give that a quick smelt. And it's going to be it's going to be great. We're going to have a fully functioning crafting grid. All of our items stored succinctly in one centralized location. We do, of course, have to pick up uh, the pre-existing grid, but that's fine. Grab that guy, make it into a crafting grid, stick that back down, and boom. So now, if we ever want to craft something, we can come in here and we can shift click it in. No longer do we have to shuffle uh, between like five different strong boxes and then move over to a crafting station and all that shenanigans. Everything that we need is centralized in this one single crafting grid. And I love it. Uh, Isaac, make an energy cell from thermal so you don't have to worry about using more energy than you're making for a short period of time. Um, I think that's not a bad idea, but I think at the moment we're constantly using more power than we're making. Like, I think right now we are pretty much always out of juice. Or maybe not. Maybe we're okay. And you might be, you might be right then. We might, it might not be a bad idea to do that. Oh yeah, these are all backing up quite nicely. Yeah, in that case, it might not be a terrible idea to make ourselves uh, an energy cell. The only trouble with it <laughs> is, of course, that... Um, it takes up space, although I guess what we could do is if we make the energy cell and just stick it at the bottom of this. Like if we just replace that bottom uh, flux duct with an energy cell that has input on all sides, but the bottom is output, then we can kind of have that buffer of storage of, of power without having, to, uh, without having to worry about it, right? Yes. He's done it. <laughs> he has done it. Gosh, this, this room is so compact, but we do have, finally, this, uh, this machine. Can we go to like a, is there a tall mode? Oh yeah, there is, but it covers up my uh, my bar there. You can move this, right? Yeah, I might leave it like that, just so we can go with medium. Not that it necessarily matters, right? But I, I think that's fine. I think I'm okay with having this on the uh, on the right hand side. Um, also, I do want auto search on, like that. So I can just start typing as soon as we're in there. Beautiful. Sorting by quantity is correct. Descending amounts. Yep, I want the uh, items I have the most for over at the top. And then normal is also fine. All right, that's all good. That is all good. All right, so now that we have our crafting grid chat, the next thing I want to work on here is uh, finally getting the... Uh, oh, I want to uh, clear this. Uh, is finally getting the blast furnace. To do that, we need 27 blast brick which I don't think is gonna to be too hard for us. So uh, for that, we need uh, the nether brick. Nether brick is made by smelting netherrack. Netherrack uh, is currently made in a barrel with lava and water, which of course is why we have this uh, tank full of 80 buckets of lava right here. I think 36 buckets is what we currently need. Um, but essentially what I'm gonna do right now, chat, is I'm gonna grab the barrel, which I assume is in here. I'm also gonna grab 
a uh, hopper. Um, I think we could definitely do with two hoppers. So I'll see if we got what it takes to make another one here. We do. Good stuff. And then um, I think we can automate this fairly easily. Essentially, all we're going to do, we're going to have our stone barrel here. We'll then have uh, the tank on the top like that. If you right-click with the crescent hammer, it will turn from blue to orange, meaning output, uh, and thus putting all of its lava into here. We can then do this and this. We can put our redstone in here. And then that is going to go ahead, put the lava in there, use the redstone on the lava, and then output the netherrack. Nice. Uh, we do only need 36, and so I am going to stop this, uh, hopefully, right on 36 there, but more than likely a little off 36, but that's fine. 38 is not a problem. We can then put that back down there, pick all this back up, and begin smelting our 38 netherrack. Should also fill those up with uh, with more fuel. And uh, of course, we can make this a lot faster if we just spread this out amongst uh, even more furnaces. Like so. Uh, while those all smelt up, what else do we need for uh, the blast brick? We do need uh, clay, I think, in the form of bricks, right? Yeah. How many bricks do we currently have? We've got 44, so we actually already have more than enough bricks. We also need nine blaze powder, which I also think uh, we will have. We've got 98, is that 98 or 38? We've got 38 blaze powder in our system already. So that is also uh, taken care of. So I think that's pretty much everything, chat, uh, to make the blast break. And uh, once we have that, we can use, I believe our coal cook is all that will work in here right now. Uh, potentially charcoal, but I'm actually not too sure. Uh, but we can use, at the very least, our coal cook uh, to turn iron into steel. Thus meaning that we no longer have to use TNT, uh, you know, to blow up uh, iron blocks to get, uh, to get steel like we did before which is uh, very nice indeed. And then once we have that blast furnace down, guys, I think the next thing I want to work on is uh, trying to get some of the machines required to make the 9x9 nine nine cube. Those include the melter, the ingot former. I'll go ahead and bookmark these. Melter, ingot former, and the manufacturing. I think those are all of the machines that we need because, again, if we look at the recipe for the next compact machine here, this one, uh, we need four normal machine pieces. Uh, those are made in the ingot former. That's where that comes in. The actual fluid is made in the melter. That's where that comes in. And then the melter and the fluid, uh, sorry, the melter and the ingot former both require basic plating, which requires graphite dust. Graphite dust is made uh, from pulverized charcoal. Pulverized charcoal is made in the manufactory um, or in the pulverizer, but you also need a manufactory uh, to turn the pulverized charcoal into graphite dust, so you might as well use the manufactory there, and that's where the manufactory uh, comes into the uh, the process. So those, I think, are the only three machines that we need if we're going to get um, a large compact machine. So actually, that shouldn't be uh, too difficult, but uh, before we get ahead of ourselves, let's go ahead and uh, grab all of those, throw them all in there, blast, brick, that should get us at least 38, uh, oh, sorry, 36, or 27 even, if I can count, of those, good stuff. And then I think for now, chat, if we quickly grab the uh, engineer's hammer, I'm going to go out and build this in this room. It's going to get a little cramped. But I think it's really the only place that we have space for this right now. Like so. Nice. And then uh, from there, let's go ahead and give this a try, shall we? So if I grab some iron ingots, um, I do want to try this with both charcoal First, if the charcoal doesn't work, then we'll try it with, uh, with the coal cook. So let's grab the charcoal. Does that work? It totally does. Nice. Um, I don't know if there's a reason not to use the coal cook. Let me check here. So, oh, it doesn't tell me. If I do this. Oh, it also doesn't tell me. Oh, it does blast furnace. 15 seconds versus 60 seconds. So these last four times as long, but... At the same time, chat, how long does it take to make the actual coal cook? Like, presumably this takes 100,000 years, right? I guess from an efficiency standpoint, we might as well use our coal cook, given that we have it. But um, I don't know. I, I also feel like it's probably not worth it because the coal cook takes so long to make. And we also have so much uh, charcoal that we're not using right now. The system's like backed up making so much charcoal. So, yeah, I think for now we can probably just use regular charcoal instead. Uh, you'll probably need to make uh, the reactor for the next machine. Since it takes a crazy amount of RF to melt down those, if I remember correctly. Oh, really? So to actually melt these down takes a lot of redstone flux. 
Oh, not this bit, the actual melting process you're saying, this one here. Oh, I see. Base processing time is 800 ticks, and it takes 400 RF per tick. That doesn't seem too crazy. It means that we need 320,000 RF total, uh, but that seems very doable. Uh, right now we're producing 240 RF per tick. Um, and I guess even more so, it kind of lends to the idea that somebody in the chat posted earlier of uh, putting down an energy cell. Um, so yeah, if that takes 800 ticks and we need, it needs 400 RF per tick, that means it needs 320,000 RF. Um, if we make an energy cell, we can actually store, you know, up to a million, uh, up to 2 million RF in the basic energy cell. And of course, we can upgrade that um, if we want later on down the line, um, at which point it shouldn't really matter that we're only producing 240 RF per tick right now because we'll have the buffer and we can just tap into that whenever we need it. So let's have a look then at what we need to actually get a basic energy cell up and running. So it's actually not too bad. We need a block of redstone, easy enough. We need a redstone reception coil, also uh, nice and easy. Two lead ingots and then one of these energy cell frames, which are also, uh, as luck would have it, extremely easy to make. And there we go, nice. Uh, do we have any invar? We do. So we should be able to make another hardened upgrade kit. Like so. At which point we can then go ahead and uh, just plonk that on here, which takes the uh, storage capacity up to 8 million uh, redstone flux per tick. And whilst we're at it, I feel like we might as well go ahead and make the reinforced upgrade kit. Actually, never mind. It requires hardened glass, and uh, I don't want to make that just yet. So <laughs> I think 8 million is going to be just fine for the time being. So the suggestion was to uh, take this and then put it inside this machine here. So our current battery sits here. If we replace the bottom leadstone flux duct with this energy cell, we can have all of our power kind of run through that energy cell. Uh, and thus we get like a nice 8 million redstone flux buffer so that whenever we start using, you know, our crusher or our squeezer or any of our other machines that kind of tank our power, instead of them just tanking through the power incredibly quickly, we will just temporarily start to use the buffer and then hopefully just never even notice uh, that, you know, the power spiked, ideally. So we're going to put that right there. I am going to suffocate, so I'm going to quickly dip out and dip back in. So we want all of these sides to be set to input, which is blue. And we want the bottom set to output, like that. So I think we're actually good to go there. I think power should still be, uh, be coming out. And in an ideal world, all the power now is just being backed up in that, uh, in that cube. Nice. Now that we have that nice buffer in place, let's have a look. And now we have the blast furnace down. Uh, let's have a look at, uh, at these machines here. So the manufacturing is the first one we need. Thankfully, uh, it does not require any of the... Um, basic plating. And so I think actually should be very easy for us to make here. We just need a piston and kapow. We have a manufacturing. Good stuff. So we do not need to power this, which um, as always is uh, is kind of the, the jankiest part of the whole operation. Um, I think for now, I'm going to do something like this. <laughs> it does make it hard to get to my crusher. Uh, so we are going to have to you know move that soon. But uh, temporarily, at least, let me go and grab some of the, uh, the old charcoal out of here. We can then run that charcoal, of course, through our manufacturing, like so. And that's gonna turn the charcoal into pulverized charcoal. We can then run it through again to turn it into graphite dust. We can then use that graphite dust uh, in conjunction with some lead to actually make the basic plating. And then that should allow us to make both the melter and the ingot former. Uh, the melter does require more nether brick, which is fine, that shouldn't be too bad. Um, I think we are also gonna have to make the alloy furnace to actually make the tough alloy here yeah again i don't think that's going to be too difficult some bricks some more basic plating yeah that looks perfectly fine now you can also make and there is a quest to make speed upgrades for these machines i'm a little cautious or hesitant because we don't have that much power right now and um just because we can make the speed upgrades in fact we could probably make quite a few of them uh, given how much lapis and redstone we have um, i don't know if it's necessarily worth it because they do also increase the amount of power the machine uses. And I have a feeling as soon as we do this, yeah. Whilst it does speed up tremendously, uh, the amount of redstone flux goes down. However, you can offset that with energy upgrades, which I think in our circumstances are gonna make life much, much easier. We just need four pulverized obsidian, uh, some crushed quartz, which I assume we can do in the actual crusher. We can indeed. And then golden pressure plates. All right, that seems actually very doable, especially given the fact that we do already have all this lava. And so uh, making water shouldn't be, or making uh, obsidian even, should not be a problem. Yeah, let's give that a try, chat. Let's give that a try. I think what I will do is... Uh, it's a little... Mm, it's awkward. 
because we need to, I guess I'm going to do this manually. Because we have to be able to put the water on top of the stone barrel. So it's not like I can just put this on top and then have it automatically push out. Because I need to be able to do this to get our obsidian. Maybe use a fluid duct. So I was thinking that, unfortunately, uh, you can't use regular fluid ducts with uh, lava. They will break. So I would have had to make like hardened fluid ducts, which in uh, in hindsight is not too difficult to do, honestly. Um, but, you know, we've done it now. So uh, can I get into that machine? I can't. Okay. I can, however, move this for now. Like over here. Thus allowing me access to this uh, machine in a somewhat janky fashion. That's doing all right. So uh, in here, we're just going to go ahead and grind down basically all of the obsidian. Now, I'm not quite sure how much uh, graphite dust we need. Let me go and bookmark the alloy smelter as well, if we're going to make that. So the alloy smelter needs four basic plating. Uh, the ingot former also needs just four basic plating. And then the melter uh, needs just four basic plating. So we just need, what, 12 basic plating? Each basic plating is made in sets of two. Uh, so I think we need six graphite, uh, 12 graphite dust. Yeah, 12 graphite dust. Okay, so actually, it's probably worth us switching this up and doing this like that. Because that should probably be enough for now. Are you done? You are indeed. Good stuff. So we'll pop back. We do also need to crush up some nether quartz, which uh, we might be a little low on after the uh, refined storage system. However, uh, we're not, but we could have made more with the uh, boron pick here if we were. So let's also get you going as well. I'll go ahead and crush all... I think I'll crush 60 here. I think 60 is what we need if we've got 60 uh, obsidian. Yeah, thereabouts. And we should be pretty much good to go there, chat. I think we're almost at the point where we can make pretty much all of these. Um, I think we already have what it takes to uh, to make the alloy furnace here. Are we missing lead? We are. We're completely out of lead. All right, let's go ahead and start smelting up some more lead real quick. Uh, we also definitely should upgrade to, like... Um, can, hold on. Can the, um, the alloy furnace from Nuclear Craft, can it work in non-alloy mode as well? A small part of me thinks that it can, but I also... Kind of think that maybe it can't. I know the one from... This is also our power now, eh? I know the one from uh, Ender.io can. Does anyone know if the one from uh, Nuclear Craft can as well? All right. Alley Furnace acquired. I guess we can find out uh, for ourselves here. So does that... Side configuration and redstone control. Unfortunately, maybe not. Although, I guess I could just try by putting, like, gold grit in here. It might just work on its own. If it has uh, power, which, of course, ours doesn't. Because we've got almost nowhere that has power. Yeah, it doesn't work. Okay, that's fine. I'm going to leave this here for now. <laughs> in this, like, extremely janky position. Um, and we need to use that to make some of uh, this tough alloy here. So, tough alloy is made with ferroboron alloy and lithium. Ferroboron alloy is made with steel and boron. So thankfully, both of those we do have. Uh, steel, we of course have in here, and then boron, we should also have in here as well. We do indeed. I'll go and get, uh, I'll get 32 of each of these and put all those in there. I think we're going to need quite a bit of the uh, of the ferroboron, and we can make both uh, more ferroboron, uh, more, more, we can make both more boron and more steel uh, fairly easily. So we'll throw that in there, let that do its thing. Um, again, I'm not going to put the speed upgrades in there just yet, because I would like to make uh, some more energy efficiency upgrades before we actually start using those. Uh, let's see if we can actually make a few of those, though. We can indeed. Good stuff. So let's see here. If I put all of those in, and then all of those in, I don't know if they... Do they complement each other one for one, chat? Like, does... Um one speed upgrade negate or does one energy upgrade negate the speed increase by one speed upgrade if so that's very nice indeed do we have any lithium is a good question we do indeed we'll go ahead and start smelting some of that up as well i guess so we can make our tough alloy this is also much easier than i thought it was going to be honestly i thought it was going to take us a lot longer to actually get all of this up and running but uh, thankfully it's not too bad at all but uh, once we have some lithium here we can go and put that in with our ferroboron alloy like so and that should start to make us some of that uh that tough alloy at which point i think we're pretty much good to make the ingot former and the melter yeah lead steel and tough alloy 
obviously a hopper, ferro ball on, and then uh, basic plating. Basic plating is just the lead that we're smelting up in the melter. Uh, it does require redstone, more, a lot of tough alloy, and then the nether brick. But other than that, it's pretty good. Let me check how we're doing on steel. We got a whole stack. Fantastic. Um, I should definitely just keep that going because we're making iron automatically over in here. It really doesn't hurt us to just take a stack of iron and, uh, and throw it in there and just continually get steel. Do make sure you take the slag out, otherwise that will get backed up. How are you doing over here? You are doing fantastically. All right, so I think we have what it takes to make, uh, at the very least, the ingot former here. Let's see. So uh, we need at least one of those. We then need, actually, we should grab the graphite dust out of there and throw all of this stuff in the system, like so. So uh, let's have a look. Do we have what it takes to make some basic plating? We do indeed. Fantastic. And then that is almost everything for the ingot former. We just need some ferro boron, which is currently hanging out over here. And kapow. Nice. So ingot former taken care of. The manufacturer is also taken care of. The alloy smelter is done. The only thing left to make here is the melter. And for that, we uh, we need at least three more nether brick. And in fact, I think we made... I think we have two, right? Yeah. Oh, gosh. We were so close earlier when we made... The last bits of, uh, of netherrack for the blast furnace. We made 37 instead of uh, 38. Nevertheless, we can uh, go ahead and smelt that up nice and quickly there. And uh, that should be all of it, chat. That should give us all of the infrastructure, at the very least, that we need to make this next compact machine. Uh, there are a few quests here for the... Uh, oh, I see. The, I don't think we have to make the reactor first. Um, there is a quest there, but it's kind of a side quest. Uh, the melter is uh, the next quest that we're doing. We've already made the uh, speed upgrade, so that's qu that quest done. And then, yeah, I think we're pretty much there, chat. We do obviously have to go through a lot of, of processing to make it happen. But for the most part, we're pretty close. We need two more basic plating. And then we need two more of these. I'm hoping we have enough tough alloy for it. We don't. <laughs> but we're close, though. So we'll take, uh, I think, I don't know if it's a one-to-one -one or not. Like, does, is it one ferro boron and one lithium to get one tough alloy, or is it one lithium, one ferro boron to get two? It's a one, one to two. Nice. Okay, cool. Another advanced plating. And all we're missing now is another one of these machine chassis and the servo mechanism. And boom, we have a melter. Nice. So that is that quest taken care of. Let's quickly grab the uh, speed upgrade there. Uh, that is also that quest taken care of. Oh, we need 64 of them. Oh, my goodness. Unless you get 500... Unless you've got 500 seconds to spare, I recommend taking a look at these. Ah, 500 seconds not that long, right? It's less than 10 minutes. That's not too bad. Uh, but yeah, so each one of these now requires 500 seconds to form. Oh, wow. Okay. Someone in the chat did say the ingot former doesn't require power. Is that right? I assume so, because it doesn't say... Um, yeah, power zero off particular. Okay, cool. So... This only takes 800 ticks, which is not long. It's, it's a few seconds. Um, but then the other one takes 500 seconds. Uh, this one, however, does take 400 RF per tick, which is quite a large amount. Uh, we are making 400 RF per tick between our two uh, compact machines. And so if we focus all of our power on the uh, the melter temporarily, we can actually you know power this enough to make it work. Um, I guess, really, it's just the... Um, we, ideally, we'd have more speed and energy upgrades, right? To make that uh, more efficient. Uh, we should smelt some more gold up in that case so we can make the uh, efficiency upgrades because we should have now more quartz in here. We do. So the only thing stopping us from making more um, energy efficiency upgrades is gold and pressure plates. Because we need to make them you know, like that. We do have the gold to make it. We just don't have the... Uh, we do, just don't have it in ingot form. I guess there's eight more there, which is is quite nice. I think this might be doable, chat. Now, the, the hardest part about all of this is, of course, just making all of it, right? Like, just getting to the point where we have what it takes to make four 7x7x7 seven by seven by seven compact machines. Now, we do have that stuff, I'm fairly certain. Uh, if we check out the calculator here, the requirements for this guy are 6,000 iron, 6,000 uranium, 2,000 redstone, and 256 wood, all of which we have. We've got 13,000 uranium and 20,000 iron. Our iron is actually... Uh, full to the point where it's probably actually backing up our system and uh, the sensible thing to do here would be to uh, Go ahead and just whack one of those on to uh, allow it to not back up our system Okay We need if we're gonna make a nine by nine by nine Compact machine. Let me go ahead and bookmark this 
Uh, we need 6,000 plus uh, steel, uh, sorry, iron, and 6,000 plus uranium. But the long and short of it is, if we look at uh, the calculator here, if we go to steps, we need 1,532 modularium, which is 24 stacks of modularium. So almost a full inventory worth of modularium. So what I'm going to do, chat, is I'm going to begin crafting modularium dust until we have almost an inventory full of this stuff, essentially. We don't need that much redstone, but here we go. Mod. A more sensible person at this point might be saying Isaac. Isaac, 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 Isaac. Does this really not pull in? That's rather awkward, isn't it? I guess I'll use uh, the regular crafting station for now. Uh, might be saying, Isaac, why not uh, automate this? And that would be a very sensible uh, solution to the problem at hand. Um, I guess it would be easier to automate once we have all of our crates connected to our refined storage system. Right? So we could use like an export bus or we could use the crafters from refined storage to make that uh, to make that work. But unfortunately, right now, we don't, we don't have that. And the reason we don't have it is space. And, you know, the reason we're making the, all the modularium is to get more space. So it's kind of a self-harming circle. That's a phrase. All right. Yeah, so we have 24 stacks of modularium blend, which is exactly what we needed. Uh, we now need to smelt 24 stacks of modularium blend, chat. And so I think it's time, once again, to bring out the big guns, aka the furnaces here. I might even make three more and put them at the bottom here because we've got a lot of smelting to do. Uh, first things first, let's basically fill all of these up with fuel. Preferably not start smelting oak wood, if we can avoid it. And then uh, begin, the, begin the smelting process. The very long and very tedious smelting process. A nuclear furnace is faster. This one here. Oh no, this one here. Smells items very quickly using uranium and thorium ingots as dust and dust as fuel. Ooh. Okay, hold on. I'll give this a try. We should have what it takes to make this, right? We need one more tough alloy, which I think we'll have over here. Oh no, we don't. But we can obviously grab some more uh, ferroboron and lithium and begin making some more of that uh, those tough alloys. We then also need some more basic plating and a regular furnace. All right, let's give this a try, shall we? So we have the nuclear craft furnace. So it says that it smelts items very quickly using uranium and thorium ingots and dust as fuel. So can I use uranium dust as fuel? Like what's the, actually, I guess I'll leave that in there. I'll take one out of here. Oh, okay. That is interesting. I should get my uh, my Geiger counter out. Am I am I dying slowly but through this process? Possibly, although it's possibly like the Ferro Ball one. Oh no, it is the it is the um, the furnace that is slowly killing me. A one hundred and thirty three F rants per tick. I don't think is is a, a, you know an amount to be worried about. But this is definitely faster chat. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Okay, in that case then. Let's do this, and let's get some hoppers going. Can this auto output? No, it can't. That's fine. Uh, let's also get a cache. So we can do something like this, and then just put all of our modularium blend up here. <laughs> You'll be fine. <laughs> I guess we can actually also just move this right just take this and stick it all the way not quite that high up isaac you're in the right area but a little too high there we go and uh, that should hopefully smelt our modularium significantly faster than the current uh, speed of our furnaces and uh, given that we have you know 7000 uranium that uh, that seems like a pretty good deal in my eyes. All right, so pretty much all of our modularium is smelted now, chat. The uh, the only slow part is um, processing it in our small compactor. Yeah, this is almost all done. Uh, we have almost a thousand modularium left 
to go there. Uh, now we basically just have to run it all through this uh, modular machine here, which is, you know, working slowly but surely. It's taking a little while, and it's probably going to take longer uh, to get this done. And so uh, what I'll probably do, chat, is uh, between streams, I'm going to go ahead and uh, take all of this modularium, uh, run most of it through, or, or a good chunk of it, I should say, uh, through the small compactor, because we need almost all of it in uh, in war form. Uh, actually, I think, yeah, pretty much all of it in war form. Some of it's in machine casing form, but, but most of it is in war form. Uh, let me see, how much of it do we need in... We need 86 machine casing. I think we can do that like right now <laughs> before we uh, wrap up here. So machine casing is made with redstone blocks, which are nice and easy. Uh, you make two at a time, so 42 redstone blocks is more than enough. And then we'll do that. Drop all this in here. Uh, so that's 64. And then what do we need? 82 redstone or 86. Okay. Uh, so that's what, 22 more? There we go. Okay, so we have all the machine casing. Uh, so now I'm going to take all of the modularium that is left and uh, between streams, I'll run it through the uh, tiny or small uh, compactor right here. Uh, so that hopefully chat next time when we come back, we can make uh, 16 or sorry, 64 of the, uh, the tiny machines. These guys right here. Uh, and then 16 small compact machines, four normal compact machines. And then hopefully, finally, one large compact machine. But for now, guys, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up today's stream there.